Hey peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous. In today's video, we're going to go over the update in InkStitch version 2.0. Mm -hmm. There's some exciting updates, so stick around. So what are we going to be going over in today's video? Well, the first thing it will do is we'll take you to the InkStitch website where we'll show you how we download and install our new version of InkStitch on top of our old version of InkStitch. Some subtle differences from our first InkStitch tutorial where we did the whole download and install. The next thing we'll do is cover uh, some of the key differences with this version compared to the old version. And the last thing we'll do is talk about and show you the new embroidery export format. Mm -hmm. So Megan, what are some of the version 2.0 updates in, in Stitch? There are more fonts. Nice. An updated letter GUI. GUI? What's that? It's a graphical user interface. We'll go over that in a separate tutorial video. And apparently this restacking objects um, was brought back into Inkscape 2.0, okay. the older version. And there's a new params warning. Helpful. Mm -hmm. So we'll go over that. Let's get to it. All right. All right, so we're going to go to the InkStitch website, which is InkStitch.org. And you can scroll down here, and you can see they dropped the new version, version 2.0 of InkStitch, on the 3rd of May. So in order to install, um, you can hit here, Install InkStitch. Go to your operating system. And then all of the directions uh, are right here. And it's not much different than what we did before, but unlike before, this is not our first time installing InkStitch. So the first thing we actually need to do before doing any installation is to delete all of our existing InkStitch files in our extensions folder. We do that by going to Inkscape, Preferences, System, and then in the user extension folder, we're just gonna hit open. And here is all of our ink stitch files. We're gonna select all of them and delete. Just like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and close Inkscape. And are we just gonna get all the directory info from the new one? Yep, so now we're just gonna pick our um, exact operating system for Mac OS, Mac OS and we're using uh, Catalina still. So we'll go to the English version here and download that. And we'll start downloading. Okay, so once your file is downloaded, you can see we're gonna do the same steps as we did it in our first tutorial uh, we're going to open up Inkscape and open up right back into that user extension folder and copy the files directly. So right here in system, our extension folder, we're going to pull up our newly downloaded Inkstitch version 2.0. We're going to copy all files and drag them over. close Inkscape again because we have to do the additional steps for Catalina which is opening up in our terminal and uh, running this command just copy that command And that's it. We have InkStitch version 2.0 installed now. Um, you can see here, if you click on this link, it'll show you kind of the new features and we'll go over some of those today. But if you're interested in reading through all of that to see exactly what they've added to the new version, it's all right there. 
let's go ahead and open up Inkscape and make sure we downloaded and ran that command correctly. So you can see this looks a little bit different than before already. Uh, you can see that they enabled the, we rerun the dark mode on our computer and it looks like it works uh, with this program now. So it's kind of neat looking in dark mode. And you can see our little uh, test circle here worked perfectly, no issues. We'll open up the text and font just to see. They've added um, a few more fonts here than before, which is great. Always having more options to go through since we're so indecisive with fonts usually. Yeah. <laughs> now we'll have a whole lot more to go through, so that's pretty neat. So we'll have those fonts. All right, so what we're going to do now is show you the params warning message that now shows up that uh, kind of keeps you from having to wait or um, if you have a slower computer you may sit there thinking it's going to be okay uh, because you just have that kind of wheel of death but uh, you don't really know something's wrong until you click out of it out of params so we'll go ahead and show you real quick we're not going to convert this to a path right now so it shouldn't work let's go into params and now you can see right away, it'll tell you that there's an error. Instead of getting just the wheel of death here and you sitting waiting for your file to be complete, you can now see, oh, there's something wrong and you can just cancel out of that. And you can see right here, um, we have an issue. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Obviously the, the issue for in this case is we didn't convert this text into a path. See, it works fine. So the next new feature that apparently was brought back from an earlier version, but we never played around with it, is restacking objects. So um, we'll just kind of create a bunch of circles here. And we'll turn them different colors just for fun. not going for any real design, but just to show you the default value in stitching this out would be the order they were created. And a lot of times when we go in uh, our designs, we have to, and you've seen us do this in a few videos of, of restacking them on a single layer, like hitting just this one, then going, that's my top layer and this one, no, that's my top layer making it so that this one would stitch before this one and so on and so forth, especially with text. We use that, right? But there's a new feature now. First, we'll go ahead and uh, do a params check on this one to show what order they would go in. So you can see the order that they went uh, was kind of random like that. But if we wanted to reorder those, we would go through our restacking process. Well, there's a new feature or a returning feature in Ink Stitch that we can take advantage of. Um, and that is uh, restacking. So in Ink Stitch, if you go to edit, you can restack objects in order of selection. So we wanted this to go in a very particular order. Let's say we wanted it to go green, red, blue, black, and then our word, we can go to extensions, ink stitch, edit, and restack. And now when we do 
our params check, it should go in the order that we just restacked them. That's nice. Like when we were doing that anyways, tie-dye shirt, that would have been pretty nice to Yeah, this get. would have been a great feature. Uh, again, we like minimizing the amount of jump stitches in our designs, yeah. especially with text. So, you know, if you get one of those things from a trace bitmap where it's going back and forth, back and forth, all you have to do is reselect them in the order that you want, hit the restack, and then you saw it just goes right in the order that you'd like it to. That's really neat. It is. Now the last thing we'll go over is the new embroidery export. So in the past, what you would do, uh, you would go into ink stitch and then visualize export and then hit this embroider. Well, now it shows a new, uh, not an error message, but kind of a path to, to bring you to the, the correct way of doing it now. Now what we've noticed is this was always here in Inkscape and we were able to export a PES file using this method in the old system, uh, but we didn't actually go to embroider it out because it was just a little test file. So we're not sure if it worked or not, but it did save as a PES format. So now you don't do it this way. You can actually do it a much simpler way by just saving it as a PES in the main Inkscape save system way. So in order to do that, you just go to File, Save As, and you can rename it. Now we'll go ahead and call this a test. And right here, you can just scroll down and you see Ink Stitch Files, and we want it to be a PES file, and we can save it. And we'll go ahead and change this directory real quick. and save. So we'll go ahead and open up that directory to show you that it is there. Test.pes, it saved it correctly. Now, one cool thing, and I thought this would be an issue because we just saved this as a PES file. If I closed this out, my fear was, oh great, now we can't edit this file anymore because it's, it's seen as basically G code versus an actual SVG file. But if I tried to close this right now, it will warn me, hey, you didn't save this as a SVG. Are you sure you wanna do that? And uh, you really always wanna make sure you save this as an SVG uh, before exiting out. Otherwise you won't be able to re-edit that PES file. So we could hit just save as SVG right here. Another cool feature, again, uh, I believe this was already in here as a feature, but again, we you didn't really have to use it because of the old embroidery export process. But um, this is kind of cool. If you go to save as, and instead of saving it as a PES or SVG, you can save it as an ink stitch zip file, which will basically save it both as you can select it to save as a PES and SVG file. That's really cool. Yeah, so you can save this all in one go in a zip file. Really, you can save it as any kind of file you want. Hit OK. So it could work with anything. Yeah, and we'll go ahead and open up that zip file to show that it worked correctly. Documents. All right, and then it saves as a zip file in the folder that we wanted to. If you click on it, um, and unzip it, you can see it turns into a file, a file folder, and both of our files are right there. And we can open this up in a new, and right here, test.svg, and it opened up as an SVG file, which is really neat one process to save it both as a PES and SVG. Now, we did just save this as a zip file, so you can see it test, says test.zip. If I try to close it, it's gonna throw you the same warning, giving you, you know, telling you, hey, did, you didn't save this as an SVG. Well, in this case, we can close without saving because we did save it as an SVG, but uh, the system only sees that it's saved as a zip file. So just a little a nuance thing there.
Well, we hope that was helpful in showing you some of the key differences in version 2.0 versus the older versions that we were working on before and perhaps you're still working on. Um, and to see if the new features of version 2.0 uh, make it worth it for you to do the, the upgrade. Mm -hmm. for, I know for us, I think this, this was a worthwhile uh, time investment in updating to 2.0 and seeing some of the new features. Yeah, I think the um, Graham's warning and the restacking objects are going to be a really good help. Yeah, very helpful for mm -hmm. us. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get reminded every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye! So the key changes of the new ink stitch are there is more fonts, there is updated letter goo. Gooey. Gooey. That's graphical user interface. Um, gooey. <laughs> <laughs>